to War Games News Radio. It is what day is it? It's Wednesday. It's Workshop Wednesday. It is the return of the Hobby Hangout, the first Hobby Hangout of 2024. Thank you all for tuning in here today. We're going to have some fun. We're going to bust out some paints and we're going to paint some flaming swords. This should be a good time. Uh, mixing things up a bit from the last series of streams where we did one gigantic project. Uh, we're going to start with some little smaller things, I think, this year. We'll talk We'll talk more about what's to come momentarily here, but let me just adjust my microphone and let's get going. Hey, who do we got in the chat here today? We've got, ooh, uh, some regular faces. we got Corbin Bear. Good to see you, Corbin. First one in the chat, nice and early. Always appreciate it. Uh, and then we've got Ryan Gale, or Gale as he pre uh, likes to be called. It's uh, good to see you in here. And yes, we changed the time, uh, moved things forward from, or back, I guess, depending on how you look at it, from five to six for the hobby hangouts to try to get more people involved, like Dan. Dan the Paladin himself is here. Good to see you, Dan. I'm glad you could make it. Our time zones have finally uh, aligned now that you're here on the uh, the other side of our lovely planet Earth here. And I'm sure we'll have more folks popping into the chat as we go. Uh, it's good to see y'all here. Uh, like I said, we've moved it all forward a bit to hopefully get some more folks able to tune in. The the time zone thing can be, it's, it's difficult at the best of times, but we, we make do with what we can with an international with an international audience. So it's it's the way it goes. But we're gonna get rolling here. Uh, and as mentioned and as advertised, we are going to be playing around with some weapon effects today. Uh, I stumbled across a uh, neat little tutorial uh, from the Paint Beast uh, over on Instagram. And I've been trying to get a good look for some glowy sort of power swords uh, for my Warhammer Dark Angels army. And I liked I liked the look of this and, and made some tweaks to it to get uh, a, a bit of a different effect. So I figured why not, uh, I've gotta do some more swords. Let's do them together here on stream. So it's nothing too complicated, but we're gonna go ahead and take, you know, one of these old basic power swords here from an old Dark Angels sprue that I got kicking around. And we're going to turn it into something that looks a lot more like the old Primarch's blade here should be a good time. It's nothing too crazy. It's more of a flaming effect than I guess it is a glowing effect. Um, lighting effects have never been my strong suit, but this was a super fun and easy thing to take and adapt on and improvise. So I figured I'd share it all with you folks here today. Oh, geez. And speaking of folks, we got Callum in the chat. Callum, Mr. Modifius himself uh, hanging out here today. Good to see you, Callum. Nice to see you dropping in. Uh, more often, very good. Uh, you were popped into the last one of the old year and the first one of the first year. So there you go. You're two for two already. We're gonna get some painting jams going here, courtesy of Stream Beats, uh, and we're gonna get rocking. So first things first. If you're like me uh, and like you know cool glowy sort of things, but don't know really where to begin, you probably just knocked out you know some whatever metallics uh, looking on your on your weapons and that's and that's totally cool. I've got more regular looking stuff than I do fancy looking stuff but on specifically characters and specific units I've wanted to give them a little more punch right They're supposed to narratively you know have more uh, I'm just gonna change my view mode here. Uh, they're supposed to you know narratively have better weapons that are you know cooler and more funky. So I figured what the heck why not try to do something cool? I'm just gonna adjust the uh, zoom here folks. Oh. There we go. Let's go with that. Let's go with that for now. But, you know, never really knew where to start. So like I said, you know, you probably got some regular old swords knocking around, which is what I'd had on a whole bunch of these different units. And well, I decided, hey, why not? Why not make them a little fancy? So I've knocked this one out just super simple, uh, just with some uh, brush on primer and a little bit of metallic. Um, nothing too fancy, but uh, the general sort of rule will apply the same. And I've got another one here. We can play around with some other colors as well. But um, we'll start first and foremost, and this is where sort of uh, I differed from the little tutorial there, is um, using some inks. Uh, inks are super, super fun, super potent, tons of pigment, and a neat little, oh, if you can get them open, there we go, without spilling it everywhere. Uh, and a neat little tool in the toolbox. I only have a couple different shades, but you can get these pretty, affordably at like a, just a generic art store. I think 
know, it's a big 30 milliliter bottle. Um, I don't anticipate really running out of this anytime soon. And uh, also handy for um, if you're playing around with airbrushing for doing um, oh, highlights and things like that. Super cheap, probably like 10 bucks for a bottle and pretty basic to go with. So I'm just gonna take this little bit of moisture on the brush. You don't need much, this is a pretty runny, but you wanna get it a little bit consistency. You can see it here whoop, on the palette. Just so it's flowing a little bit better than it normally does. And nothing too scientific. We're just gonna get it on. I'll prop myself here actually. Just a quick layer. You could do this with just a, a watered down white paint as well. It'll give you the same effect. You, you wouldn't have to necessarily use this step, but I think it's a nice way to kind of set the sword back to zero. And also with the, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna bury the sword in the stone here Oop, a little bit. There you go, so I got something to paint off of. But uh, yeah, it's great to see some folks tuning in here today. The, um, the Hobby Hangout's gonna try to make these a more regular thing. We had aimed at the start of last year to do, you know, once a week, kind of ended up being more like once every other week, depending on streaming schedules and stuff. But um, really excited for what 2024 will bring for, uh, you know, hobby stuff, personal stuff. I hope you all had a good holiday. But um, we're back in action also from our... Fallout 2D20 live streams. I uh, had the first one on Sunday. Sorry, gang, I'm just going to adjust the camera just a little bit. Uh, squeakity squeak. If I can move a little bit more forward. There we go. Had a great uh, first show back of the year with Raj back in the saddle from his uh, his little injury there. It was really great to, to get the gang back. And on that... Speaking of live streams, we're saying that that's going to be the, the goal for the year. This is going to be the year of the live stream. There's still some stuff from, from 2023 that we never got around to doing. Like that damn crisis protocol battle, battle report. We had it all set up. I had all the terrain built. And life uh, 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 finds a way to get in your way. With that done there... Nice little trick I like to do if I'm just kind of speed painting and knocking stuff out. Just got a little tower fan next to me here. Not on super, it's just on the lowest setting. So it doesn't, you know, push too much of the liquid around, but it's nice to just, you know, if you need to quickly dry something off in a flash. But while that's, there we go, see, look at that. Already looking better. So while that one's drying with the white, I'm gonna go and do the same with our regular black one here. One, because I had the sword, and two, because I kind of wanted to do it as an experiment. Um, with all the other ones that I did in this process, they were already painted metallic. So I wanna see what it, uh, if it punches it up a bit. Pow! By adding, well, not adding, I guess, in this case, going straight from primer to the ink. I'm imagining it's going to make it even that much more vibrant. But um, the plan for this is we're going to do one of these in like a reddish, well, yellow, orange, sort of fiery glow. And I'm thinking for the other one, we go green. Did a blue one. I've done a bunch of red ones now, so I'm thinking green's the next one to try. So we'll see how far we get through the first one. But just slapping that ink on, like I said, don't have to worry. Well, especially right now with no other details painted, not too concerned about any sort of runoff. Like I said, this ink does, it's very, very thin already, so... You don't have to water it down too much. Just kind of have to get moisture on your brush more than thinning it down. There we go. Love to know what y'all are painting tonight while we're waiting for that one to dry here. Move it aside. Let's check in with the chat. 
Howdy, howdy. Trying to make more of them. Well, that's handy, Callum. I'm trying to make uh, I'm trying to make all the Modiphius ones too. Speaking of which, when is the next one? Did I miss it, or is it upcoming for January? Is it last of the month? You have to remind me. Gail says, Moot Green. When the heck did they change the proper name from Snot Green? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's what it looks like, right? But I'm thinking with, with this, and, well, it looks yellow because it's separated right now. But some Tesseract Glow, some other stuff, we can get the neat effect. And I guess now that we're ready to get into it here a bit, we'll go over sort of how this works. Actually, there's a little runny spot here. One sec. So, what we're going to do is it's kind of like the inverse of, you know, how, how you feel like you would traditionally, you know, paint something. Rather than go from sort of dark to light, we're going to go from light to dark to, to you know, simulate that the, the hottest, glowiest, most energy part uh, is in the middle of the sword and it gets cooler sort of as it goes as it goes out, you, you could probably do it, you know, do it the other way, but I think it, it kind of adds to that sort of encrusted sort of lava um, effect, especially if you, uh, I'll show you another one that I did here, especially if you add a little more black, Oops, having trouble focus there. If you add some black and some darker tints to it, but essentially we're building from our brightest color, which is going to be this Imperial Fist yellow, uh, and then gradually going sort of darker over a tritone. So start with yellow, a bright yellow, a less bright yellow, orange, super bright. We're going to go with a, uh, a fluorescent in this case, orange, a less bright orange. And I might even throw some other oranges in there too. And then red. And for that, we'll use a darker red and then a more brighter -er red. So two colors per color, if that makes sense, in this tritone, starting from light to dark. So I throw one more layer of this ink on here. Pull on this guy, let it dry. And then go there. And yes, please y'all let me know what y'all are working on. See if you're painting anything in the chat. Those damn tremors back again today. Okay, we're going to set that one aside to dry. And we're going to go in with the first color. Oh, we got Zach Posey in the chat. Good to see you, Zach. Thanks for tuning in. Didn't see you snuck in while I, while I wasn't looking. Oh, and Callum says the next Modiphius uh, painting stream is this Friday. Uh, was ill last week, so delayed a week. Ah, so I, I didn't miss it. I kind of, I would have missed it, but I didn't in this case, which is good. I'm just gonna turn the brightness on this light down a bit. There we go. Okay, first things last. Boom, Imperial Fist Yellow. This is this this color is the answer to I hate painting yellow. It's just chalk a block with pigment, and if you're doing something like this, where we've got a white base layer. Sorry, just gonna move my. Uh, and get my elbows on the table. And it just pops. Damn near instantly. Look at that. No having to fuss with brown or pink undercoats. It's just fucking yellow. Ugh. Got it. I'm at a weird angle right now. Here we go. See, just like that, boom. It's as yellow as yellow can be. Zach Posey says, uh, tried finishing his Institute core set today before a flight, but sadly did not. Just got dirt and crime washes to add uh, and base edge finishing. Oh, well, that's, that's pretty darn close, you know? That's up to, you know, tabletop quality there. That's fun. Institute Core Box. That's a, that was one of my favorite ones to paint, actually. I wasn't all that jazzed about it. But it's such a neat sort of 
they're such a different faction uh, compared to everything else you get aesthetically, right? Um, sort of brighter colors, a little cleaner, depending on how you decide to go. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that box set. Frank M. Frank M. in the chat. Good to see you, Frank. Frank says, still at work, uh, but he's finishing off a Furioso Dreadnought. Ah, the more angry angels. Very nice. I, I wasn't a Blood Angels fan for the longest time, mainly because, I don't know, va vampires are just weird for me. I don't know why. It's, I was never one of those, like, I was never into vampires. You know, everyone goes into those phases. I was a werewolf guy. So it just never really did it for me. But um, but I've, I've been reading or listening to uh, some Horace Heresy audiobooks. And yeah, they're pretty cool. So there you go. We got yellow there. Yellow. Nice and easy. Super bright. And we're not even going to let this dry all the way because there is, you know, a little element of wet blending in here helps. It's not necessarily the goal, but I wouldn't worry about making sure every layer is super dry right away. Maybe a little bit more. There's a lot of, I guess it's a type of finesse, but blending of colors. So we got that one done there. Easy piece. Now we're going to move on with, what yellow is this? Deep Yellow by Vallejo. By Vallejo? I can never say it right. I don't speak Spanish, Baxter. In English, please. Ate a whole wheel of cheese and pooped in the refrigerator. Not even mad, I'm impressed. Frank M. Oh, love effects look awesome on DAs. Oh, and salamanders. Yes, that's very on brand. So, with this yellow here, we're going to go in sort of three quarters of the way up the blade ish and kind of stroking towards the edge still want to get a decent amount of coverage but we're going to kind of go back and forth with these colors so Little bits at a time. Kind of like a three quarters of an edge highlight kind of thing, if that makes sense. And and water, the more watered down you get, the better. I'll show you here. So I'm kind of watering down the, it's the very sort of edge of my paint here and getting it so the brush just down to a glaze, right? Somewhere between a wash and a glaze. It's like the most ambiguous painting fucking bullshit ever. But that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> slowly sort of build that up. Glazed layers. It's, if you got something that kind of has this cool point to it, it's kind of fun as well to sort of build some volume on it. And once you sort of get that initial sort of lighter, I just hit my mic, <laughs> glaze layer on, I'll then go and get a little, sort of a little bit of a thicker consistency. So you can see how that's a little bit thicker there compared to where it was before. And then do kind of a, a, a chipping sort of thing again sort of within that three-quarter sort of strip around the blade kind of like an edge highlight but sort of just flecking in darker tones onto that brighter tone so that's going to kind of give it that 
sort of, uh, uh, I don't know what the word is for it. I'm going to say incandescent. That's not right. But um, almost like chunky effect. Burnt, right? Like some parts of the blade are hotter than others. You can see just right there. It's a little harder to see just with the yellow. You can kind of see that it's it's taking on almost like a texture to it as well. For the sake for the sake of just painting today, I'm only going to do the one side of the blade just because it's going to be annoying to flip it back and forth. But you'll be shocked to learn that to do it on the other side, it's exactly the same, but inverted. 20 points, if you get that reference. First one in the chat wins points. Points are not redeemable for any cash value. Moving on, Orange, the Orange, AKA Interactive, Luminous Orange. I love this. It's a weird color. It's got a, cre it's got a weird consistency that I don't actually enjoy painting with, but for something like this, where we're gonna use it as a glaze, it's awesome. So this one, again, it's a, whoa, it's exploding all over my palette here, as you can see. Uh, it's a fluorescent orange, so it just punches, but you don't want it to kick too much. So I'm going to load up my brush with a decent amount of water, just kind of pull some of the fluorescent into my puddle, as unattractive a sentence that is to say. So this one in particular is going to go really, really thin. You can always add more layers, harder to take them back. Lather, rinse, repeat. Go through again, trying to stay sort of a slightly smaller surface area than before. Like I said, very gradual. Who's in a rush? Who's in a rush? And we just slowly chip away. And again, you don't want to have your brush loaded up too much. There's no harm in having to go back for another pass. And you can get a little bit sort of overlapping with this one, or at least I like to with the fluorescent. More like a wash. We'll actually come back in with this fluorescent at later stages to use, to blend the other colors together. So we're kind of gonna come back to this one a couple of times. And again, same thing, go through, sort of add some sparse nicks. And focus your pigment, sort of to pool, if it's going to, on the edges of the blade. Now, there must be something in the water because uh, I believe creeping on uh, Callum's Instagram as well, I noticed uh, our main Modifius man's working on uh, some power swords, I believe for an Ultramarines champion. If my addled memory is, is uh, to be trusted. So there you go. So now we've added a little bit of a deeper tone into that and blended those two yellows together somewhat with that orange. Just gonna keep moving down the line. This scale color, because apparently I can't decide on a brand that I like. Uh, Mars Orange. Really enjoying these uh, scale color paints though. Um, gotta get me 
some of them fancy army painter freaking holy shit max pigments just watching the, the people paint with them on instagram uh instagram reels and shit i'm just like wow that looks so easy it's like the gnarliest acrylics so now again with this mars orange watered down a little bit more a little bit thicker than uh, had with the excuse me with the fluorescent this is where we're going to start sort of really seeing a transition we'll do a couple layers of this one in fact And again, it's sort of a weird fine line between painting less of the sword each time, but also blending parts of it together. Oops. Ah, Callum says, yes, it is funny. Just just finished a power effect on the company, ch company champion. Yes, there we go. Uh, doing a glowing, oh, glowing nuke alerts this Friday. Amazing, something in the water. Well, definitely something in the water uh, at the new Coca-Cola plant, that's for sure. I will be most sure to tune in. I did a glowing Meyer Lurks thing once upon a time. Eh, they were more like neon than actually glowing, but... It was a fun experiment. I'm very curious to see how you guys get on because yeah there's definitely things i uh, would do differently okay so once we've got sort of the last of the second color the fourth color second second color of the second color now we're actually going to go back a step to yellow to again sort of blend things together you know see we're starting to get orangey it's, it's again still kind of hard to tell against that black backdrop it won't focus too much but it's coming in. So now I'm going to go back to the darker yellow. And I'm going to give a little bit more punch. Oops, it's a little too watered down there. To the middle of the sword. down the middle especially if you've got one of these sort of nice grooves in here <clears throat> excuse me You get end up with a weird sort of primer spot like I did there. Again, just going in with sort of the edge of the brush, doing that sort of chipping, putting smaller dots, sort of an erratic pattern, which also helps to blend in the yellow to the orange. Checking in these hot spots, if you will. Put a 
guess we could edit a play there. There we go. Okay, that back and forth. <laughs> Excuse me, back and forth, back and forth. Oh, we got some more folks popping in. Robin Mankiller, hey, how you doing there? Violet Kraken Gaming. Oh, and, and there he puts it right in there. This is Violet Kraken. Good to see you. Cheers, everyone. Cup of tea. 2024 will be the year of the live stream, but will also be the year of tea. I'm making the switch. I love my coffee, but I've noticed already, like a month and a half, just switch to tea on the regular, like down here. So it's been nice. Oh, and we got Luck God 84 in there as well. Howdy, howdy, Luck God. Thanks for popping in. Let us know what you're working on in the chat there, gang. Popping in. Oh, look at that. Robin Mankiller working on a commission and fixing to go live, but keeping you in the air. Well, that's darn, darn appreciative of you. Yes, uh, go check out Violet Kraken gaming over on Twitch, the YouTubes, the Instagrams, all this kind of stuff. Robin's doing all kinds of cool things over there and a commission painter as well so if you need something done we know a guy Ooh, callum says got to get you some yorkshire tea bags well i wouldn't turn uh, i wouldn't turn those down it's uh, been a hot minute since i had a, a proper as they say cuppa i'm gonna go in again here with the neon or the fluorescent orange. Again, in that sort of wash. Just to punch it up a little bit more. I'm realizing now that yellow is a not fun color for the camera. It's not showing nearly as much shift through the process, but that's okay. If we get onto green, we'll try it again that way. In there, get more of that orange. And now we're going to go in, give that a hot second to dry. Uh, and then it's time for red. I'm going to use a slightly different red than... Ah, here we go. Yeah. That's better. Again, more Blood Angels. All Blood Angels all the time. Because we've got uh, Mephiston Red and Blood Angels Red. We'll be using for this one. And we'll even kind of go even a shade darker with some brown. Um, slash black. To finish it off. To give that crusty, crusty goodness. So, first things first, Mephiston Red. A little bit of this on the palette. Again, going to water, water it down a considerable amount. To a glaze. Always add more. Hard to take back. Especially when we hit this stage. So again, focusing even more on the edge now and doing more in sort of that chipping. It's even got too much of it on my brush here now. Yeah. Even doing more of that sort of chipping effect and pushing it towards the edge. It's okay if it pools a little bit in spots because it'll kind of give the the sort of varied heat pattern that we're looking for. But getting that consistency can be a little tricky as you want it to flow nicely and have control over it, but not go too cattywampus all over the place. Oh, 
hope you guys are having a lovely start to your new year and that the holidays were a lovely time. Got some fun things planned coming up. First battle report of the year. Uh, Going to be filmed on Friday. Very excited. Got some Brotherhood of Steel on deck. Up against everyone's favorite mutated green boys. Going to get some, uh, some T-45s out on the table for the first time. Very excited. And Sarah Lyons will be making an appearance as well. There we go. So, there now. Getting a little bit more. I'm taking away from this thing because it's not showing it as well. Now we can see we've got that. Well, that side doesn't have it. <laughs> but we're getting into the sort of glowy effect of it here now. Which, I mean, you could even just sort of stop there and call it a day. But to punch it up, you really want to get to that darker red. And then I'll show you with the... Uh, actually, this, is, this was a well done one. Got a bunch of these guys laying around here now. To get that hot, hot heat on the edge, slash middle, slash all the parts. Now, got the Blood Angels red, which I can't open, oh, apparently. And for this, I'm gonna get a little bit of contrast medium, which I unfortunately dropped some blue into, so now it's Kind of blue. Looks like a, I don't know, <laughs> Tau soldier took a bath in here. But just a little bit of blue. It won't affect too much. Mix this up nice and good together. Some of those in here. A little bit of a better flow to it. Again, I'm going to work a lot of it off my brush onto the palette before I get going. Now on, uh, on stuff like uh, old lion's sword there, um, I did multiple layers of each color, um, probably sort of two to three more than I've done sort of here today, but uh, it's one of those things that, you know, you, it's a, it's a practice it makes perfect or practice makes better. Um, so I've, geez, I did six, uh, nine, nine, ten of these in the last uh, week, week and a half. Um, and I, I started with the less important units and work my way up to uh, to Primark level, but um, but again, the, the more the more you the more layers you put in, sort of the more vibrant the effect will be. But um, like I said, we'll go kind of go back and forth through the colors to punch it up as we go. Oh, Robin Mankiller says he's in the middle of building a whole demo set and putting together stuff for battle reports. Oh, right on. For uh, for which system? Always curious to know what people are playing. Uh, Luck God 84 says, push it up a notch. Give it a blast from your spice weasel. There you go. He's got it. Which I didn't even know that Futurama uh, had made uh, another resurgent comeback. Uh, but I just finished watching uh, the entirety of the new season. Got to keep that Spice Weasel handy. Goes a long way. You, uh, by, by uh, you know, I ended up doing sort of like a batch of these. 
<clears throat> like I said, and um, you know, if you've got four or five of them on your guys, just sort of go through yellow, orange. You can do a, a pretty, uh, pretty easy batch of all of them. I'm actually gonna go in now. So with that first row of red there, looking pretty good. Sort of more of an edge highlight than anything. I'm actually gonna go way back to Jump Street now with the first yellow, Imperial Fist. Super watered down. Not even with contrast medium, just regular old fashioned H2O. Let that water flow. Right down to a wash and hit the whole damn thing. Just helps it blend it in a little bit more. Add some of that vibrant yellow to it. And when that's dry, go and do another one with that fluorescent. Then go back with the little chick, 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 chicks. Kicks? Checks? I don't know why I want to call them checks. It feels like I'm chick, 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 checking with the edge. luck odds are correct the show is so good it just keeps getting canceled over and over and over again but it, it just it just won't say die and i'm here for it the classic episodes are still a cut above the rest another again with that fluorescent orange on the edges Kind of in between where the uh, reds meet the orange. I'm actually going to go back in with the darker orange now. Again, to do some of those little darker spots. All about the blend. Blend it like Beckham. So yeah, Callum, if you want to get that uh, tea all right on over here, I, uh, yeah, I won't complain. I used to work with a Yorkshireman by the name of Michael Jordan. No relation. A fantastic human being, but he was a character. Oops. Dang, microphone's too close. Building up sort of thicker and thicker layers. Easy little check marks. And back to red. Sort of this up a layer, back a layer, up a layer, back two layers. It's not an exact science. Too much of a brush there. Yeah, I definitely find the more sort of back and forth, the more intense it starts to look. Going camping, intense. Dad joke for you. It's, it's slowly getting that sort of fiery 
flamey effect going higher and higher up the blade from the darker areas over the lighter ones. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. And don't neglect your edges either. You can get a thicker sort of standard edge highlight. Now we're starting. Now we're starting to kick it up. Bam! Spice Weasel. The other thing is that it doesn't take much to screw this up and have to go back a step or two either. But it's also not very difficult to fix it at that stage either because you're kind of doing that back and forth anyway. A little bit thicker around the blade here. Yeah, there we go. Darker around the hilt too, because yeah, it would be a little cooler by the blade, so you don't, you know, blow your hand off. Ever heard someone from Yorkshire say "tint int tin"? Uh, I, uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. That one's that one's new to me. But he was very fond of calling me a Burke, which I don't think was the most flowery of compliments. But it was said in love. At least that's what he said. Fucking back. Never heard that one, Callum. Okay, there you go. Maybe he picked it up from somewhere else. I'm not sure. Look, God says it means something isn't in the tin. Tint in tin. See, I can't decipher that one. Even with the accent. Back with the Blood Angels Red. The very, very most utmost edges. I like this uh, particular contrast red. Because it's it sort of leans almost, when it's thinned down at least, like closer to like a pink. Don't mind, but it's a it's a it's not sort of the red that I picture in my head when I think Blood Angels or even you know red red. It's more the Mephiston red for that one. But the eye the eye is a tricky thing. Somebody posted. Uh, Asking for a, uh, just calling me in the middle of a live stream. Don't they know I'm busy? And somebody posted something in the, the follow-up Facebook group, um, looking at, uh, asking about painting something, uh, a specific shade of yellow. When I looked at it, all I could see was orange. And maybe it's because I'd spent the last week painting yellow, orange, yellow, orange, red. But um, it is funny how uh, how the eye sees sort of a different thing. There we go. Okay. So, look at that. I mean, that's for all intents and purposes. Um, the process. I'm going to go in here with a little bit of yellow. With, sort of, with the second yellow. Sort of add some hot spots. This is where kind of... The, the fun and character of it comes in. Depending on the, uh, well, the surface area of the blade, too. That you're, or, you know, it doesn't have to be a blade. You know, you could be working on... Uh, the one thing I want to try this on is um, Super Sledge, but green. I'm going to radiate Super Sledge. But yeah, uh, depending on the surface area of what you're working on, or working with more accurately, um, 
you can kind of add, you know, some different elements. Like I say, like these sort of the, the flecky bits or, uh, uh, you know, even kind of like a lightning with the ink, very thin sort of line on the edges, which I do have some lightning swords somewhere in the, somewhere in the depths of my boxes of shit. But I got that one there. Let's go ahead and uh, sort of do a little bit of sort of finishing touches on it. I could do this with a brown, like a dark brown, uh, but to sort of just save time because I want to I want to try to speed paint a green one of these super quick. Um, or just use black. Uh, yeah, Black Legion will do. I'm just going to get a bit of this on the brush. And this is sort of just all in an edge highlight. To start with, at least. It's going to be the coolest part of the blade. You did a dark brown sort of before, out, slip. <laughs> just painted a giant black stripe right across the freaking sword. Um, what was I saying? Yes, uh, if you did with a brown, uh, and again, sort of did a, a, a thicker surface area, or wide, uh, larger surface area, and then did the black edge highlight, um, you get a little bit more, again, punch to it as well. But like I say, I want to I wanna try to speed paint a green one. I think that'll be fun. And uh, who doesn't like a little speed paint challenge? Which leads me to, as I was saying, I uh, want to do this here as more, more live streams, more in different live streams. Hobby stuff, uh, more in different game systems. We're going to do, uh, we're going to do some more Acton Cthulhu. We're going to fire up a D&D &D stream, which will be fun. At least a one shot. Be very exciting. We've got the bug because we've uh, just re sort of rebooted, if you will. Um, the offline D and D campaign uh, that me and the other guys um, play, where Grant is the GM, and um, we just had our first uh, sort of session of this new campaign uh, on the weekend, and my God, it was a great time. So we've got the bug. We got the bug back for the RPGs, but well, also. Keeping on the Fallout news, doing more, uh, more indifferent stuff in that world. Of course, 2D20, but also, you know, more fun stuff like this. Doesn't have to be Fallout related, right? It's a good time. There's all kinds of things we can do. So if you've got ideas. Throw them in the comments, you know, or something, or something you, you know, a, a wacky paint thing you want to, I don't know, <laughs> see me struggle with or uh, anything thereabouts, let me know. Do this a little bit differently here. There we go. There we are. Okay. So again, with that black, because we've got these sort of raised, the, the sword has a sort of beveled section in the middle that dips in so there's a, a raised two raised edges there so again through the middle of the sword and this is what i think really sort of gives it if i can get the freaking paint to stay on my brush there we go the consistency is strange here got too much and then too little there we go give me what i want i really hate to goof this up right now but And I did. <laughs> I don't know why this freaking edge is so hard to find here. So much of my brush. Yeah, I'm gonna use a smaller brush. Which is gone somewhere. This'll do. This'll do. No, 
no, we won't do. We have to do different black. Well, gray black, but ooh, that's all right too. Here we go. Put a little speck of black on there. Come on now. What is up? It's my edge highlighting game right now. There we go. No, it's just not working. Just have a weird consistency. Anyway, you, you get what I'm trying to do. Throw a freaking. There we go. Highlight down the middle. Or dark light down the middle, if that makes sense. And sort of same thing on any of the uh, sort of powery bulbs we got there. And now because I freaking screwed up, I'm gonna have to go in and quickly clean it up with this yellow. What's going on with this tip of these brushes today? It's all split and weird. I've misplaced my finest tip somewhere. There we go. Yeah, kind of hard. Apparently, this is hard to show on the live stream camera, but there you have it. With with enough blending, you too will end up with something that looks like that. Super fun, super easy. Like I said, it was a neat way to take uh, some older models I had, like these old Firstborn Marines um, that have been converting into into uh, Blade Guard unit. Just a cool way to add just a little bit more character uh, and personality to something that just had a, a basic silver sword. And if you want to get super fun with it, you can do the same thing with other colors. This one I did blue. Uh, again, just went with the white uh, and did less less steps for this one. Uh, just sort of went a really light, uh, a, a, like a, wa a watered down slash mixed white blue um, and then two darker blues and then did some white in the middle super fun but let's try a super quick how how glowy green can we make this let's uh let's set a timer here it's 701 let's say how cool can we make this look in the next 15 minutes let's find out well you know what i'm gonna set it i'm gonna set a timer you know what let's 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 go let's go for broke We're going for it. Stopwatch, timer, 10 minutes. Let's see how far I can get. Bam, we're going. Green, ah, I'm panicking. Uh, okay, we'll start with uh, the moot green. Go, go, go. Slow, steady, steady is slow. No, what is it? Uh, can't remember the saying. Quick is slow, slow is fast. No. If you're not on time, you're late. And something like that. Moop green. Watch out. Oh, she green, gang. This would be cool for like a Death Watch army or again for doing uh, sort of rad radiation stuff. I'm only going to do this one side for the sake of time and sanity so again just going with that white ink underneath bam that's a spice weasel right there that's why you gotta have the, that's why you have the tower fan 
cut down drying time. Or a hair dryer, I guess. Adios, gang. Nice to see you, Callum. Thanks for hanging in. I appreciate you stopping in despite the late time. Luck God as well. Off to, off to bed for you. I will be shortly following you once this painting challenge is done. One more quick layer of the moot. It's moot point. Pow. Fan. We got six minutes. We're not going to make it. We were gonna, we're gonna get, we're gonna get something on here. Warp lightning, uh, dark angels green, Caliban green, same thing. <sighs> yeah, that might be it. That might not be all we get. That might be all we get. So this timer went faster than I thought it was. Tower fan for the win, bringing it in. We're back. Okay. Uh, warp lightning. Contrast paint we're not gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna mix it with medium we're just gonna go speed paint it's a state of mind not a brand it's not a phase mom Boom. Take that. I think we can get more of that moot here. Radiation sword. I'm already not mad at this. Imagine if I didn't set an arbitrary, ridiculous time limit. We cooking. We cooking. More warp lightning. Sure, why not? Well, I hope y'all have had as much fun uh, with this silly little project as I have. Gonna be looking for uh, more sort of sort of experiments uh, quasi tutorial type thing there's sort of more fun stuff to play around with on these hobby hangs still want to get uh, cracking on another big project here as well but uh, breaking it up from time to time I think with something like this will be enjoyable super speed okay what now what now what color uh, right the dark angels Four minutes, we're laughing, gang. Oh yeah, a little bit more on this side. I ain't mad at that. Back with the moot. It's not a moot point. Three minutes. Laughing, laughing sure. water down there oh gosh two minutes uh, what else we got what, what else can we throw at this thing I don't know uh, oh tesseract glow I don't even know if I have time to shake it up 
so freaking separated. I need one of those stupid paint mixers. I take back all the bad things I ever said about those online. <laughs> the one time I need one. Okay, I think we got it. Just gonna hit the whole uh, center. No, the whole thing. Use it as a wash. Am I panicking at the 11th hour? No. You are. One minute. This is the... Oh. Fluorescent green. Didn't even know I had this. Should have probably started with this. Oh, no. It's plugged. Oh, I can't get it on. I gotta get it open. Why did I do this to myself? Okay, I guess I'm gonna shut. Oh, I still. I'm going by the clock, not the timer I set for actually 10 minutes. I still got two and a half minutes. That's okay. I like this better almost. This is an unintentional wet blend, but it's what's happening. Sure. Oh. And oh, there it is. Time. Boom. Green sword. Not bad. Look at that. For ten minutes and a needlessly panicky thing to do. My painting desk looks insane right now. But here's a green sword. Just like that. That's how easy this process is. Take the same sort of three shade approach to whatever color you want to use. Uh, and again, it's however much time you put in will be how vibrant and uh, different it looks. But this was a great time. I now have a green sword I can add to my army, which is super fun. Uh, might have to do a couple more of them in green now. And definitely going to be trying this out on a... Uh, Children of Adam, Huberschleg. Because Adam's judgment is like the coolest damn weapon in Fallout 4, and I want one. I want one on my tabletop. But gang, that's gonna do it for me today. Uh, I'm gonna go and get myself something to eat because apparently I haven't done that yet today, but we're, but that's, that's, just, that's neither here nor there because I'm very excited to get back in the swing of things, like I said, we've got uh, more live streams coming up this year. Going to be filming the first battle report of the season. Uh, not, not tomorrow, but the day after. Uh, so that's super exciting. Uh, and thank y'all for uh, sticking in and having fun while we're painting some silly little things. This was a great time. Uh, I'm super excited to be trying out more sort of indifferent stuff to be playing out with uh, on the Hobby Hangouts because... Hey, it's a big old hobby world out there. Let's have some fun in it. Uh, but thank you all so much again for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back next Wednesday at this new time, 6 p.m. Super fun. I hope to see more of you there uh, and hope to see all of y'all there as well. Oh, my goodness. Well, there's the actual timer that I set, not the not the 10 minute timer. Um, there we go. But yes, Devin Shipwreck, have a good one. I, did, I didn't even see you were there. I apologize. Thank you for, for tuning in. Uh, I didn't say hi to you earlier. Uh, Frank M., good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, oh, who else we have? Fat Boy and Corbin. Oh, Corbin. Fat Boy. Oh, you, you showed up at the last second. I'm so sorry. My apologies. Uh, but we'll get you going next time around. Uh, Robin Mankiller, go check him out. Violet Kraken Gaming. Zach Posey, Callum, Mr. Modifius himself, France, uh, in the chat. Escore P, Gale, uh, oh, uh, Paladin Dan was in here today. Man, this was a good one. Uh, thank you all so much for stopping in. We'll be back next Wednesday. And uh, remember, don't feed the Yowguai. Bye!